All right, I'm going to go over today how we individualize training programs in a group training setting. So I think what separates us from a lot of other training facilities and high school weight rooms is the fact that we can individualize programming and still train in a group and get the benefits of training in a group atmosphere. Because training one-on-one -on -one is really boring, um, or with just one or two kids, it gets to be very boring. Athletes, from my experience, um, thrive in a setting where there's other, a lot of other like-minded athletes that are working really hard, um, have similar goals. Um, the intensity is a lot higher when they're surrounded in that, in that environment as opposed to just one person in the gym with, with one trainer training them and it's kind of boring. Okay, so it's also more cost effective, whereas we would charge maybe $75 to $120 an hour uh, to train a person one, one, just for one hour to train, train one kid. Uh, you know, some people are paying $100 to $250 um, for the whole month, and, they could, and they're training four times a week, as opposed to, you know, if they do that at $100 an hour four times a week, that would be $400 a week. Um, it adds up. So it's more fun. It's more intense. They get more out of it. Um, it's more cost effective to be training in a group. But they're all downsides to training in a group because a lot of times training can't be individualized. Because what a lot of training facilities do is they go and they take all the sixth and seventh grade baseball players and they bunch them together and they create a training program for sixth and seventh grade baseball players, which is fine, but all those kids aren't on the same level. Um, they don't have the same needs, so every, there are differences there. And they do need some individualization in their programming. Um, so the way we do it is we have a couple what we call general physical preparedness or GPP programs, and that's where we start all of our athletes. And in those programs, we need to ha hit certain standards. Basically, it's almost like graduating from school. You hit this standard, you can now move on to the next program. So... And general training means fundamentals, it means fitness, it means just you're developing a base of general physical preparedness and fitness. So every athlete needs to start there and need to build that base, and then as they advance, they try to maintain that base of GPP as we build upon it with more maximal strength and explosive strength and things like that. So within our program, we have like two or three, we have about three programs of GPP, and Athletes have to hit standards. They have to basically, we have to be able to take that sheet and check off each exercise there that they hit the standard. Now, those standards might be um, just a certain weight. So it might be like Johnny needs to do 25 push ups, okay? 25 perfect push ups to the bar uh, on the ground or whatever it is. It also might be a percentage of body weight for something. So it might be, you know, Johnny needs to do an RDL, perfect RDL, back parallel to lower back parallel to the floor, uh, with 100% of his body weight and resistance. Okay, so that would, you know, some of those things are body weight uh, are based on body weight depending upon what we're doing, because different kids are different sizes, so um, we base things on body weight a lot of times as well. So that's how we do that now. We need to be able to check off each, each exercise. Essentially, we want to see each exercise checked off before we move on to program level two and then to program level three. But sometimes kids, some kids are going to be really good at certain things and really bad at other things or just they're lacking in certain areas. So they can't really move on to program number two until they finish this off. So we'll have uh, progressions and regressions within the program. For example, um, if we're going to do some L-sits where we... we we reach our legs out in front of us, you know, the, the initial level one program might be to sit on the Roman chair with your knees up to your chest and you got to hold it for 30 seconds. Well, for some kids, that's super easy. For some kids, that's such a struggle. So we'll have something maybe a little easier than that and something a little bit harder. If that, so if that's easy for them, we'll go to the harder thing. And if it's, not, if it's too hard for them, we'll go to the easier thing until they can do the thing that we're trying to get them to do. And then if we could check off every box, we move on to the next level. So that's how we individualize programming for our more of our beginner programs and our general physical preparedness programs. So this would be the younger athletes, uh, maybe the early middle school, the later middle school, kids that are newer to the gym. Now, from there, once we get through those general physical preparedness programs, now we get into a more advanced program and we do what's called a conjugate style training program, meaning we are concurrently training all the uh, athletic qualities that we're trying to um, train, basically. So we're training 
<clears throat> maximal strength, we're training explosive strength, we're training speed strength, um, and we're jumping, and we're working on strength endurance, and possibly muscular hypertrophy, or trying to be, build bigger muscles. We're working on all those things throughout the week, uh, every week, week in, week out. So we're not doing phases where we do, um, you know, one week of hypertrophy and one week of endurance and one week. We're doing everything every week because you lose, you, you lose qualities after 7 to 21 days. So that's why we're constantly training everything. So we're going to wave it in and wave it out just like that. Now, <clears throat> within that program, what we usually do is have a main exercise for all the advanced athletes in the gym advanced programming or the conjugate programming, we have, a, we have one main movement for upper, one main movement for lower. And everybody will do that movement. If we have to adjust it for someone to based on injuries or something like that, we will. Um, so, for example, this week our main lower body, our max effort lower body exercise for our advanced guys was box squats to a below parallel box. So if they squat was parallel to 16 and we went 15 or 14, plus band tension. You know, the stronger the athlete. So our really strong athletes, if guys are squats six, seven hundred pounds, we put on super strong bands. Our more, more uh, beginner type of guys, we put on lighter bands. Okay, so that's our, you know, the weaker guys use lighter bands. And that's just basically how we did it. Everyone did the same thing, but at different levels there. Now from there we go to jumps, and everybody on one day does the same jump, and when we jump the second day, we do individualized jumps based on sport, and needs. So, for example, our baseball player might be doing more lateral specific jumps or more transverse jumps, whereas a football player working on speed might be doing more um, reactive type jumps, okay? So it just depends on the athlete and the sport and their needs. And then from there we go to accessories, and accessories could be anything. Every, we might have 10 kids in this program and there might be 10 different accessories, or some of the kids might be doing the similar things. It's based on we assess them when they do their heavy lift, we find weaknesses, and we basically give out our accessories based on those weaknesses, and they do the accessories until they can't get better at them anymore, and then we switch them. So that's basically how we individualize programming in a group setting. So some of the things will be similar for some kids, some of the things will be totally different. Um, it's, it's obviously going to be, it's much more uh, coaching, we have to do a lot more coaching and a lot more training. Uh, <coughs> with our with the guys in this type of training as opposed to just lumping them all together and saying you guys are all 17 year old football players so we're all going to do the same thing we don't do that um, we might do like I said our main exercise will all be the same um, but after that we break up and we all split up and go our, about our own way so we really have to be coaching more because there's more kids doing different things um, so it makes it a little bit more chaotic in that sense, but I think the kids get a lot more out of it And that's how really training should be it should be more individualized to your weaknesses and as they get better We're act we're actually asking them for feedback. So where do you think that you're weak? Where do you need work? Because um, they're the ones doing you know We could see it, but they're the ones doing it and they're the ones feeling it So we always are asking for feedback and that makes the training even more individualized and as they get better and better, as they learn their bodies and learn how to train more, they're actually, will start to coach themselves. And we're more of guiding them and helping them along in the process and making sure everything's going good. And we're still coaching them, but they're actually coaching themselves at some point because I have kids now that I've trained for a long time that says, all right, I just deadlifted today. My lower back is weak. When I'm sprinting, I feel like I'm not getting good push out of my hamstrings. So I need to work more lower back hamstrings maybe not so much quads right now for the next few weeks. So um, what could I do to you know, build up those areas? And then we'll go through a couple things, show them how to do them, uh, make sure they're doing them right, tell them how to progress. So once you get this many reps, we're gonna do this. Once you get this many reps and this much weight, we're gonna do this. And then we progress them through like that. But they're kind of taking charge of their training. And that's where we wanna get a lot of our athletes to. Uh, it takes a long time, obviously, but uh, by the time, if we've had a kid for three, four, five years in the gym training from eighth grade to senior year of high school, we expect them by the end that they're actually <coughs> um, managing themselves. We're coaching them, but they're managing a lot of the training on their own and really fine-tuning that training. <clears throat>